Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at a concrete shear wall design, and we're going to be utilizing metric units today. So previously we've done a shear wall uh, with uh, the U.S. customer units, and so this one will be using metric units. So just as a reminder, right, shear walls generally resist lateral loading due to earthquake and wind. Um, shear walls must be designed to have adequate strength in shear as well as combined flexure and axial loads. And uh, it's generally desirable to have the walls uh, that resist shear to also resist gravity loads to help resist the overturning forces that come with the seismic or wind loading. Um, and we must satisfy ACI 31819 11.5.1.1. And that's basically saying that the axial, uh, required axial, is going to be less than the uh, allowable axial, and same for moment and shear. So right, if we quick look at this diagram here from um, the ACI uh, figure R11.4.1.3, um, we have all the different forces on a concrete wall, right? And so for us, we're going to be looking at in-plane shear, in-plane moment, and then also the axial force on the wall, uh, as well as the self-weight. So we will not be looking at the out-of-plane shear or the out-of-plane moment. Those are separate calculations. So let's take a look at our problem statement. Right, we're going to be using uh, ACI 31819M. Right, so for metric, um, we have a concrete shear wall that is three meters tall by five meters long. Um, our concrete strength is 28 MPA. Our yield strength for the rebar is 500 MPA. Our wall thickness is 400 millimeters. Um, we have uh, 20 millimeter diameter bars at 300 millimeter vertical spacing, and that's two layers, so the double layer uh, of reinforcement. Um, our horizontal reinforcement is 16 millimeter diameter spaced at 450 milli millimeters. Um, our loading is as shown, right? So we have already uh, calculated our ultimate loads here on this wall. So we will not be applying any additional um, load factors or load combinations. Uh, so we have an axial load of 16,800 kilonewtons. We have a shear load of 850 kilonewtons. And then we have a uh, moment of 15,500 uh, kilonewton meters. Um, and our goal is to determine if the wall is sufficient to resist loading. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we can go ahead and click into our concrete design module, um, into our standalone designs, and then we will click on shear wall design. And we'll change our unit system here over to metric. Click continue and we'll get that uh, loaded up here. So um, let's start going through some of our inputs, um, right? We can include the wall weight or not. It'll calculate, you know, based on the thickness and everything. Uh, but we've already sort of done that. We have our total loads at the bottom of the wall. So we're going to um, hit no on this. We could also, um, you know, do the foundation check, which would allow us to enter in some parameters for uh, length and width and that sort of thing, and then check our sliding and overturning. But for this calculation, we're just going to stick to the shear wall. Uh, we've got some other videos on, on uh, foundation design. So for the wall dimensions, right, our wall length is 7 meters, um, our wall height is 3 meters, so we'll leave that as is. Oh, I'm sorry, it's uh, 5 meters tall, uh, long. So 5 meters long, 3 meters tall, our thickness is 400 millimeters. Uh, our reinforcement, let's see here, we have our vertical reinforcement is going to be um, uh, 20 millimeter diameter, two layers of 20 millimeter bars and that's spaced at 300. Um, and then for our horizontal reinforcement, we also have two layers and we have uh, 16 millimeter bars spaced at 450. So we've already got a little bit of an issue here. Um, it's giving us a warning about the horizontal reinforcement uh, minimum. So we will take a look at that when we get to that section and then we can uh, adjust as needed. Um, so first let's go, uh, sorry, last thing here is our material properties. That doesn't change. We, we just said we had 28 MPA and 500 MPA, so we're good there. Um, and we can go ahead and go over to our demands. Um, so we'll not be using any um, load combinations. We've already decided that we have the ultimate loads here from our problem statement. So our flexural demand is 15,500 kilonewton meters. Our axial demand is 16,800 kilonewtons and our shear demand is 850 kilonewtons. Okay, um, we can see here uh, that we already have a, um, our demand capacity sort of quick look here of 0.64, so we are okay in, in that with the, the flexure. Um, but we still have our minimum reinforcement, minimum horizontal reinforcement uh, is not met. So let's step through the calculation here and then we can update as needed. So, um, so we can take a look at our supplemental loading rate, which is not gonna 
be anything there because it's not using any sort of load combinations and we don't have any wall weight added or anything like that. So this is just going to be zero. Um, and we have just all of our uh, our demands are just going to be what we inputted. So you're just going to see here as design load uh, what that is for each item that we entered. So there's no, you could, the load combinations are zero because we're not using any load combinations. Um, so let's go ahead and check our minimum reinforcement rate. We had an issue here. So let's take a look at our horizontal. So we've got a horizontal reinforcement ratio of 0 0.0022, but we need 0 0.0025. So let's go ahead and increase our uh, horizontal reinforcement. Uh, we'll just bump that up to 20, see if that fixes it. So that looks like that is enough there. Uh, bumps us up to 0 0.0035, um, and that gets us above the minimum requirement. Um, our vertical reinforcement, we are okay here. Right, and then um, our design is controlled by the flexural capacity of the wall. So we step through this. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time in here since we've done other videos, but this is basically a uh, sort of similar to a uh, a concrete flexure check, except that you do have some differences based on the uh, axial load on the wall. So uh, we step through the the flexure calculation, um, and then we can determine our moment capacity, um, and we have uh, you know. Uh, probably a plenty of reserve here on our moment capacity. Um, then we can check our axial, right? And again, plenty of reserve on our axial. And we check our shear capacity, and we have plenty of reserve on our shear capacity as well. So that is a shear wall design in CalcBook utilizing metric units. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions for other calculations, uh, please let us know in the comments below. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.